Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Rocky Mountain Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair hosted by DriveScan. We're happy to have you with us. Thanks for joining. And a few housekeeping items before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type any questions to our presenters at any time. We do request that you share those with, uh, indicate which institution you are uh, asking your question to. That way they can properly answer them. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of uh, several sessions happening, so be sure to sign up more uh, for more at strivescan.com, and this presentation will be recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com backslash Ramacac. Without further ado, I want to kick it over to our awesome uh, panelists today and presenters. First up is Cornish College of the Arts. Take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Sarah. Let me get my screen up. Okay, whoops. Alrighty. Hi everyone, my name is Albert Rubio and I'm an admissions counselor here at Cornish College of the Arts. Cornish is the premier visual and performing arts college in the Pacific Northwest and we are located in Seattle, Washington. Cornish is over 100 years old and we're also one of the few art colleges in the country where visual and performing artists actually get to study together. This is our founder, Nellie Cornish, and she and the many teaching artists who followed her believed in innovative education through exposure to all of the arts. And that perspective really led to some of the greatest innovations in the arts during the early 20th century. It shaped much of how we create and appreciate work today. And it helped to put the Pacific Northwest and specifically Seattle on the map as a thriving arts community. And our mission here is to provide students who are aspiring to become practicing artists with an educational program of the highest possible quality in an environment that nurtures creativity and intellectual curiosity while preparing them to contribute to society as artists, citizens, and innovators. And we realized this mission by offering baccalaureate studies in the performing and the visual arts, and by serving as a focal point for public presentation, artistic criticism, participation, and discussion of the arts. Our degrees are really designed to help our artists build all of the skills that they need to navigate the professional landscapes of the 21st century. And we will be educating you in critical thinking, creative problem solving, collaboration, as well as the generation of new work. You'll be focusing on traditional as well as interdisciplinary and experimental art forms. And your faculty members at Cornish are professional working artists. They're committed mentors as well. They maintain thriving careers in their respective fields. They maintain all of their industry connections. And this really provides them with all of the knowledge and the skill necessary to train artists of today because they're still making work today. The Cornish community is also dedicated to small classes, mentorship, and personalized instruction. So the average class size is around 13 students and the faculty to student ratio is one to seven. So as an artist studying at Cornish, you are gonna get all of that individualized and personal instruction that's super important to a successful arts education. Cornish is an urban campus and we are located right in the heart of downtown Seattle, immersed within the arts and culture of the city. Seattle is one of the world's epicenters for the visual and performing arts. And this really makes it an ideal city to pursue your autistic education. Seattle houses some of the country's best live music, theater and dance companies, a popular music scene that has garnered national as well as international attention. We've got over 20 live theater venues. We also have Pioneer Square, which is known as one of the country's most prominent art gallery districts. Seattle is also home to the Fifth Avenue Theater, Seattle International Film Festival, Seattle Art Museum, and the Upstream and Bumbershoot Music Festivals, just to name a few of the many arts organizations you have the potential of interfacing with. Essentially, Seattle is a thriving professional community for practicing artists and designers, and Cornish has been at the forefront of that creative scene for more than 100 years. In terms of our exact location, we are located in Seattle's South Lake Union District. That's where Amazon maintains all of their campus spaces. We're right down the street from the biospheres. And our campus is surrounded by creative agencies, architecture and design firms, many nonprofits. And we're within walking distance from all of the prominent creative spaces for art and culture. You'll find Cornish alumni, faculty, and students making bold, innovative work all over the city. You're also going to have access to a variety of state-of-the-art creative and performance spaces, and these are available for use by all of our majors, regardless of their discipline. 
Visual artists are making art in individual and shared studios, materials labs, editing and recording suites, and much more. And performance artists are rehearsing, performing, and learning in a wide array of practice spaces, black box studios, historic concert halls, and the iconic Cornish Playhouse and Al Hadif Black Box Studio, which are located in Seattle Center. It's where the Space Needle is, but it's also where all of our large scale arts and performance venues are located. Currently, we're training students from 38 states and 18 countries. Many of them live right here in the Cornish Commons, which is a 20 story residence hall that we had built with artists in mind. Features plenty of space and special amenities like private bathrooms, movement studios, practice rooms. There's even an art studio. 20th floor is also reserved just for our residents and it boasts amazing views in all directions. Cornish offers Bachelor of Fine Arts degrees in the visual arts and everything you see here and in the performing arts in these majors. For our music students, we offer a Bachelor of Music. And for transfer students who are applying with an associate's degree or equivalent, we offer a Bachelor of Arts option, which allows uh, those transfer students to finish a degree in two additional years in these majors over here. Some great information in the 2019-2020 academic year, we actually became the first and the only art college in the country to lower its tuition. We lowered it by 20% and we award over 4 million in scholarships each year to our students with all of our admitted students being automatically considered for merit-based scholarships that are guaranteed for four years. If you are interested in applying to Cornish, you can go to apply.cornish.edu slash apply or you can apply through the Common App as well. Um, priority consideration is going to be given to students who apply for admission and financial aid by our early action deadline of December 1, and all those applying for scholarship consideration should apply by February 15th. Of course, you can learn more at cornish.edu, and you can reach out to us at admission at cornish.edu. Thanks for listening. We hope that the artists will consider applying to Cornish next year. Thank you so much. And next up, we have College for Creative Studies. Awesome. Thank you. So I uh, have been doing this, I've done quite a few of these, and I have to tell you guys, I am extremely excited to have another art school <laughs> on the same docket. So hopefully we have some creative thinkers out there to uh, start looking at some of your options. Um, I am Patty Spencer. I'm an admissions counselor with College for Creative Studies, which is in Detroit, Michigan. Um, Detroit is an interesting city. It is a very large city. Um, it has literally had a renaissance over the last couple of decades. Um, you know, when you hit rock bottom, sometimes the only way to go is back up again. But some of the first people to come back into the city um, after that were the artists and musicians and designers. And it really is a thriving community. It is a huge city. We were the first and only uh, city in the country named a UNESCO City of Design. Um, which is really amazing. The school itself is actually located in what's called Midtown Detroit. And we have two locations. Um, the top one that you see here, those two photos, that is the Ford campus. And we also have our Taubman Center for Design, which is the, the uh, 10 story built building you see on the bottom right there. Um, we do have housing available on campus. We have traditional dorms as well as apartments um, available for all students. You can have cars on campus. Um, you're not required to live on campus, but it's definitely an option. It is a very safe area. I always like to point that out. Parents get really nervous when they hear Detroit. So that's kind of a, a fun thing. Um, we are a mid-sized school. When you look at art schools, we have just over 1,400 students, pretty diverse uh, students as well, 34 states and 24 different countries represented this year. Um, for an art school, like I said, that's about mid-sized. There are some that are a lot smaller than that, and there's some that are quite a quite a bit bigger than that. Um, our average class size or our student teacher ratio is nine to one, and our average class size is 18 to 20. We offer a BFA, Bachelor of Fine Art degree in these majors, um, along with several uh, cert, um, concentration programs, like for example, under craft and material studies, we have ceramics, fibers and textiles, furniture, glass and metal smithing and jewelry. Um, we also offer a teaching certification for art education. So if you have an interest in teaching art, um, that is a great program to check out as well. We have earned a number of great uh, awards over the years, so I definitely would encourage you guys to check those out too. Uh, similar to Cornish, we're actually about the same age. CCS was founded in 1906, 
So just a tiny bit, um, tiny bit older, but kind of around that same time. Um, one of the biggest things I want you guys to take away from this, if you are a creative thinker, you know, that whole idea of starving artists needs to go away. There are too many different things you can do as a visual artist these days, too many different opportunities from traditional, you know, fine arts and crafts to um, very high tech based majors like animation, transportation design, product design, things like that, um, you know, concept design, all of those different kinds of things. Um, so there is a field out there for you. It is not, again, starving artists. There are great salaries that can be made by artists out there. We just had the Oscars last night. So that's a great celebration of uh, the performing arts and visual arts as well. So that kind of gives you guys some ideas. Uh, one another thing I do encourage you to think about and look at when you're looking around at colleges is what are the students doing when they're done? Are they getting you know, the kinds of jobs that you want to get. So take a look at, you know, after the four years, what is happening. You guys should recognize a lot of these logos. This is just a sampling. Um, we've had over 400 companies on our campus in the last few years to interview and recruit students. And we have alumni literally all over the world. Um, there's a huge art market in Detroit for design, for traditional arts. Um, so that is a really great resource, but it's not limited to that either. Um, like I said, we have people all over the world. Our alumni association is really strong. Um, if you are a junior or younger uh, tonight, we do have a wonderful pre-college program. It's a high school, it's set up for high school students. If you're thinking about art school, maybe you're not sure it's what you wanna do, or maybe you're thinking about a major um, like transportation design or something you haven't had any experience with in high school. Um, a summer program is a great way to do that. Um, ours runs uh, for three weeks this summer. It is virtual again this year. We are hoping to be live, but it is virtual unfortunately, um, but it still offers some really great opportunities. Um, application wise, pretty simple. We have a free online application. You need to have your transcripts. The minimum GPA for admission is a 2.5. Higher is definitely going to be better for scholarship. And then all majors are required to submit a portfolio. Um, generally, the portfolio for CCS needs to be eight to 12 pieces of your best work. Every art school portfolio, though, is going to be a little bit different. So make sure you do a little bit of research. Um, Deadline dates are very similar to what you saw with Cornish. December 1st is our uh, priority deadline. February 1st is our scholarship deadline. You can get a lot more information on our website. So I definitely would encourage you guys to check that out. I will put a link um, for that in the chat when I'm done. And I will also give you my email um, or you can reach out to the admissions office at this email. If you'd like to scan the QR code, uh, that will give you additional information about CCS as well. Um, so definitely encourage you to take a look, start with websites, take a look at what's out there, look at student artwork and make sure you ask us questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next up, we have High Point University. Hi everyone, my name is Brooke Cavallo. I'm one of the admissions counselors on our team at High Point. I'm actually a regional admissions counselor, which means I live in the territory that I work with. So I work with students from Southern California, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and I'm a proud alum of High Point. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. Let's see, bear with me. Oh, there it is. All right. So at High Point University, we focus on these four pillars that make up our academic success for students. So of course, the first one is academic excellence. We want to start off with stellar faculty, making sure that you're getting strong classes in whatever you choose to major in at High Point. But then we want to go beyond that. And so we have experiential learning in every single major, which will look different depending on what you want to plan to study. It could be research based. It could be internships. It could be student teaching. For me, as a special education major, it meant getting outside and going into the classrooms, building up four years of teaching experience, including when I studied abroad, doing lots of lesson plans um, and making sure that I had a huge portfolio when I graduated and could talk about real world experience um, anywhere from kindergarten to 12th grade education. So if you're in experiential learning, you like to get outside the classroom, that's definitely going to be of interest to you. 
Beyond that, we have a four-year development of life skills. So we'll talk more about what we mean by life skills, but basically it's just the softer skills of knowing how to network and work with people on a team and do things outside of just being really great at your major. And then lastly, we have modeling values and building character, which really just means being a good person, wanting to give back and be kind to each other and the community. These are our top 10 freshman majors, so that's not to say we don't have other ones. We have a ton listed on our website, so definitely don't feel nervous if you don't see yours up here, but these are our most popular for freshmen, and it's no mistake that you'll see undeclared listed first. We encourage students to come into college with an open mind. We never want you to feel pressured into choosing the, whatever major your parents want you to study, or maybe you got all A's in the sciences, and so that's what you feel like you have to go into for a career path. We're going to help you kind of navigate what's going to be the best for you. Not only what are you going to love to study, but what are you going to be great at? We do things like personality and profile assessment tests to help you figure that out. And then we have tons of hands-on learning opportunities, shadow opportunities as well to kind of give you a better idea of what you're going to really thrive in. We have tons of state-of-the-art academic facilities on campus. Right here, you can see our cult plant planetarium, excuse me, where you will get a chance to look at the ins and outs of the solar system, the human body, and then we have things like the human biomechanics lab on our campus, news and radio studios for our communication students to really get familiar with that equipment, and then executive boardrooms for our sales and business students as well. This year, we're really proud that we were able to continue all in-person learning for our students so that you still have that typical college experience. We plan to do the same in the fall. And you can see here, we had some new safety measures in place to keep everybody distance and safe on campus, but we have class sizes of about 30 students, 15 to one student faculty ratio with no teacher's aides whatsoever. Um, and then we have a four-year graduation guarantee for our students, so you're not spending extra time and money staying on for a fifth and sixth year because of impacted classes or anything like that. We also offer a tuition-free master's to all students joining us in the fall. So that just means that if you complete your four-year undergraduate at High Point University, you're automatically enrolled in um, a free master's degree as well if you want to stay on for that fifth year. And then we also have success coaches, which is a little bit different than your academic advisor that maybe you had in high school. This is an elevated combination of an academic advisor, life coach, mom and dad away from home, just your go-to contact tech person throughout your entire freshman year and then beyond that if you want to continue that um, layer of support as well. But they're going to help build your classes, help you get involved on campus if you want to get a job at High Point. They're going to really make sure that you're making college um, the experience that you want it to be. This is Byron Pitts. He's definitely one of our inspirational leaders on campus. We believe mentorship matters. So no matter what you're majoring in, there's going to be people that have been really successful in that career that want to give back. And so you have access to those industry leaders. And as we spoke about earlier, this is one of our communication buildings where you're going to get that hands-on learning experience, be working with equipment, practicing broadcasting as these students are in the background. And when it comes to mentorship, we have, of course, professors that are really skilled in what they're teaching you. A lot of them do have real world experience. So my education professors usually had some years of teaching under their belt where they could mentor me and give feedback on lesson plans and how to tweak them, how to work with certain students with certain disabilities. But we also have innovators that have been really successful in their career and they maybe don't have the time to teach full time, but they come to campus and mentor our students one on one or they teach um, mini workshops that you can attend as well. So most students are familiar with Mark Randolph. He's in the top hand corner here. He's the co-founder of Netflix. So something I'm sure we've all become pretty familiar with in quarantine this year. Really amazing to hear his story, how he got Netflix off the ground and then have him give you advice and feedback on how to get your ideas off the ground as well. In the bottom right hand corner, you'll see Steve Wozniak. He's the co-founder of Apple. So I we all can thank him for the self phones we carry around all day. So really amazing individuals. You can look at our website to see the list of um, about 15 innovators we have on our team right now, um, depending on what you want to study. We also believe in giving back. So that pillar about, you know, being a kind person. So we do tons of community service. It's not mandatory at all. These are just things that our students like to do to give back to the local community. 
And this is our steakhouse on campus. So this is where we focus on life skills. And so we wanna teach those skills that are gonna help set you apart from your peers outside of just the academic foundation. We wanna be learning how to network. So we do that by including this in your meal plan at High Point, there's no additional charge for you. You are gonna practice time management by making a reservation ahead of time with your friends, roommates, whoever you wanna dine with. You're gonna practice fine dining so that if that final round of interviews or that networking opportunity is you grabbing lunch with a CEO or the head of the hiring department, you're not gonna be nervous about what fork to use or how to order your steak or anything like that. And then you'll also learn about different cultural series and celebrations across the world. Thank you, Brooke. We do have to move on to Salve Regina University. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's sorry. okay. No worries. Um, so Salve Regina, you are up. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Nick Albanese with Salve Regina University, located in the Ocean State, Rhode Island. Um, if you're wondering what our name means, it's Latin for Hail Holy Queen. And we we're founded by the Sisters of Mercy. So they gave us our name and they've given us so many things over the years, but one of my favorites is our mission statement. The very first line is, as a community that welcomes people of all beliefs. So if you think about these nuns and our board of trustees sitting in this room years ago, it was really important for them to, you know, of course, acknowledge um, our Catholic identity and, and you know, the um, deep sacrifices that they've made to become nuns. But I think it was equally important to start out with a line that spoke to inclusivity um, and spoke to welcoming all students. The Sisters of Mercy are an organization kind of similar to the Jesuits. Um, they have a number of schools around the country and their five critical concerns are earth, immigration, nonviolence, racism, and women. So these are uh, some of the, the greatest um, ailments of society that you know, we want our students to think about how they can address head on and it's integrated into all of our curriculum. So when students graduate from Salve, they're gonna feel like they have the ability to make a difference in the world around them. They have an ability to make an impact in the lives of others. We're a small university, so we have just over 2,100 undergraduate students and a little over 600 graduate students. There are over 60 majors, um, and we also have a number of accelerated graduate programs. Some of our popular areas include really any form of business, um, administration of justice, chemistry, biology. We are well known for our direct entry nursing program where we actually guarantee the clinical so students will finish on time in four years. Um, and then we have some unique programs. We have a Bachelor of Arts in Dance, uh, we have a really interesting program called Cultural and Historic Preservation, where students study the built environment. They take courses in archaeology, anthropology, art history, historic preservation, and restoration. They go on to careers in archaeology. Uh, they join historic preservation and planning boards. And it makes sense that we emphasize so much history at Salve and, and have programs that take advantage of that because we're located in one of the best kept historic districts in New England. So we're in the Bellevue Avenue Historic District, sometimes called the Mansion District of Newport, Rhode Island. We're on an island in Rhode Island. Um, in the city of Newport on the southern part of the island. It dates back to the 1600s and there's cobblestone streets and brick buildings and wharfs that go on to the water. Um, it's one of the sailing capitals of the world. And our campus is an open campus. So we have historic estates uh, right in the neighborhood. Students can walk downtown very easily. So they get to live and learn in these historic buildings as well as some new, newer state-of-the-art buildings. 85% um, of our students are, are from out of state. So being from the West, you won't be the only ones there. Um, and we don't have cars for first year students. We always have events going on. So it's a very active campus. Uh, we have over 20 division three varsity sports. Um, I mentioned sailing. Um, we're also pretty well known for ice hockey and basketball. Uh, we have a number of club sports like rugby. We've been national champion several times in the past 10 years. Uh, we have over 60 student led organizations. We have the Pell Center for International Relations and Public Policy. It's a think tank that was formed by an act of Congress in the early 90s. And that brings in speakers from all over the world to our campus, uh, influential minds like Dr. Cornell West, Dr. Jill Biden, Senator John Kerry, the Prince of Liechtenstein, the Dalai Lama. Um, so our students are able to be inspired by these folks on campus. Uh, we have a number of events going on throughout the year, like carnivals, magicians, concerts, comedians, um, and of course, service is really big. As a Mercy School, all of our students participate in community service, giving back mostly right on the island to organizations in our backyard. 
So in terms of admissions, most students have between a B plus and an A minus GPA. A quarter of our students have a 4.0, but a quarter have below a 3.2. So I really appreciate that we admit a wide range of students. Um, you don't have to be a perfect 4.0 student to come to Salve, um, although of course it doesn't hurt, but uh, we have a number of support services for students that uh, need a little bit of extra um, attention as well when they come to Salve. We're a member of the Common Application, and we waive the fee for students from the West, uh, and we are fully test optional for all of our majors. And I would just say that our, our academic learning environment compared to some of the other small privates in New England, um, I would say is much more collaborative than competitive. In terms of our uh, deadlines, you can apply in November, January, or February. All of our options except for early decision are not binding. So you apply, you'll you know, find out, and then you'll have until May 1 to make the final decision. Early decision is binding. Uh, and also nursing majors must apply by November 1. So early decision in nursing are November 1, and then students can apply any of the other deadlines if they wish. Um, most of our students qualify for financial aid. We offer generous merit scholarships. Uh, they range from 12 to $25,000 off the total cost of tuition. Uh, and also we have need-based aid. Salve was able to be open for much of the pandemic. Um, and so we do have in-person tours as well as lots of virtual opportunities. So I encourage you to check out salve.edu slash visit for all of those offerings. Um, and I'm regionally based out West and I'd love to talk to you I'm in your time zone. Um, so here's my contact information, but now I'll turn it over to our next presenter. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nick. Next up, we have Northeastern University. Thank you, Nick and Sarah. Hi, everyone. My name is Devin Smith, and I work at Northeastern University as a senior assistant director on the undergraduate admissions team. I'm excited to tell you a little bit about Northeastern, which is located in Boston, Massachusetts, and is a community of about 18,000 undergraduate students. Since we only have a few minutes together, I'll really try to focus on what makes a Northeastern education unique. What really sets us apart is our distinctive model of global experiential education. We believe that learning happens best at the intersection of academics and experience. So when classroom study is integrated with real world experiences, such as work, research, service, and global study, you become more intellectually engaged and gain a more sophisticated worldview. Each student at Northeastern truly charts their own academic path, choosing from over 220 majors within our seven undergraduate colleges. We also offer the Explore program for undeclared students. Two things that I'd like to highlight are our combined majors and our core curriculum. Combined majors are unique hybrid degree programs that allow you to combine two majors from any of our colleges, and they are super popular among our students. Our core curriculum is called New Path, and New Path is competency-based rather than course-based. So you'll build your own curriculum by choosing courses from any of our colleges that will fulfill these high-level competency areas. Now, in addition to your academic requirements, each of our students has an experiential learning graduation requirement, which means that they must complete at least one out of the four pillars that we offer, which you can see here are co-op, global, service, and research. There is so much that I could share about all of these different opportunities, but for now, I'll focus on co-op, which is what we're most widely known for. Co-ops are six month full-time work experiences that are so much more than an internship. They allow students to apply what they're learning in the classroom to real world contexts while also building their professional networks. Students can complete one, two, or even three co-ops. And the first time that a student is eligible to go out on co-op is the spring of their second year. Over 50% of our students actually receive a job offer from a previous co-op employer upon graduation. So in addition to co-op, all of these opportunities are truly preparing our students for success post-grad. Northeastern is located in the wonderful city of Boston, Massachusetts, and it truly is one of the best college towns. 
we have over 30 colleges and universities within the city. So that means not only will you be joining a community of Northeastern University, undergraduate students, graduate students, doctoral students, faculty and staff, but you'll also be joining this really wonderful student community within the city. So it's very likely that you may form friendships with students who go to other schools because you'll be interacting in the city together. One thing that I do want to highlight that I think makes us unique in comparison to some of the other schools in the Boston area is that we truly are a campus within the city. And this is something that students tell me is one of their favorite parts about Northeastern. We actually have a 73 acre campus and we're located right in the heart of the city. So Fenway Park is only about 15 minutes of a walk away and Newberry Street, which is one of the more popular areas for shopping and restaurants is another 15 minutes in another direction. So you really do get the best of both worlds in terms of having that traditional campus setting with quads and academic buildings and knowing when you're within the Northeastern community, but you have access to everything that the city has to offer right at your doorstep. Here you can see our different deadlines and decisions. We have two deadlines. November 1st is when our early decision one and early action applications are due. And then we have January 1st where our early decision two and regular decision applications are due. We did offer some new benefits to applying early decision that can be found on our website, which is something that I'd encourage you to check out. And we re recently announced that we will be test optional for this upcoming application cycle as well. That's everything that I had to share with you. So I'll drop my contact information in the chat. I am the admissions counselor for Colorado. So I look forward to supporting you and your families as you go through the application process. Thank you. Thank you so much to um, our wonderful presenters. And now I'm actually going to ask them all to join me back on camera because we do have some additional time that uh, we wanna use for a Q and A session. And we'll go in the order of which uh, you all presented. So the first question is for the audience, what advice would you give or what's one piece of advice you would give someone going through the college search process? And we'll start back with Cornish College of the Arts. Awesome, uh, thanks so much. I think for me, piece of advice that I would give to someone going through the college search process is to just keep those doors open, open as many doors as possible. Um, look at all the options, especially if you're like on the fence about art school, apply, check to see if we've got a like application fee waiver, um, but closing a door before you open it is I think not the right way to go. Um, I also think ask for what you need. Um, at art colleges, you're gonna have to submit a portfolio and an audition. And many of our schools will um, do portfolio reviews. At Cornish, we also do, um, and I do an hour of audition coaching with um, the theater students. So if you're like needing some assistance to kind of prep for that process, uh, reach out because many of us will be able to help you. And College for Creative Studies, Patty. Yes, um, but that was, I would definitely agree with what he just said too. My advice, um, for my 20 plus years of college admissions is to find the school that's gonna be the right fit for you. Um, it's not always the school that most of your, um, you know, schoolmates are going to, your best friend, your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. It, it might be something completely different. Um, it's very important to think about all those little things, the size, the location, to find that right at school. Do not let sticker price scare you at the beginning of your search because schools can look very expensive on paper, but most of them are going to have some kind of financial aid or scholarship program to help you out. So you could ignore a school that would be a great fit for you because you think it looks too expensive on paper at the beginning of your search. So again, keep an open mind like Nick said or like um, uh, Albert said, uh, sorry, and definitely work to find the school that's going to be the right fit for you, no matter what major you're going into. And Brooke with High Point. Yeah, I agree completely with everything each of them just said, but I would say it's never too early to start. So if you guys are joining as juniors or even sophomores, freshmen, um, I think it's wonderful that you're doing your research and the sooner you can go visit a campus in person, the better. So you can get that 
feel of if it's the right fit for you. As Patty was saying, you might have all your friends raving about a university and then you go tour it and it doesn't feel like the right fit for you. Or you might add a college to your list just because your counselor thought it might be a good fit. And then once you're there in person, it's your dream school. So if you can visit in person safely, I think that's a great um, tip. If not, most colleges are offering more virtual opportunities than ever. So definitely don't be afraid to get involved. And then my other piece of advice is just there's no stupid or silly questions you can ask. And we are all here to help. We've all been in your shoes before. We know that the process can be a little intimidating and overwhelming. So don't be afraid to reach out and introduce yourself to your admissions counselors and utilize us because we're excited to help. Alve Regina. Yeah, I would just add, um, you know, I, there are hundreds of colleges around the U.S. The majority of those colleges accept the majority of the applicants who apply. So if you're stressed about, you know, colleges that are super selective, um, hopefully that helps, you know, assuage some of that. Um, in addition, there, you know, the majority of colleges in the U.S. are, are now test optional. Um, and so if you're stressed about testing, hopefully that helps. Um, but my advice, you know, would be to make a list. Hopefully that list is balanced by senior year where, you know, you have some colleges that are a bit of a stretch, um, some that are, you're right on target and some where um, you're actually a little bit above those averages. As long as you have that well-balanced list and you like all of those colleges, you will get in somewhere. And Northeastern University. I agree with what everyone has said so far, but I will tack on to what Albert said in terms of keeping your options open, but in a little bit of a different way. I think that it would be to your advantage to consider keeping your options open in case that during your undergraduate education, you may change your mind about something like your major choice. We know that students across the country are changing their majors at least once at very high rates. So while you may feel really confident in your choice right now, you will probably have some experiences in your first, second, or third year that might allow you to dive deeper into that major and either affirm your choice or help you realize that it's not the right fit for you. So I would just encourage you to, to think about that possibility and make sure that you consider the other options that might be available to you if you do end up changing your mind. And so now to the next question, we'll start back with, uh, with Cornish. Um, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? So Albert, over to you. Awesome, thanks again. Um, my favorite event and tradition on campus is actually happening right now. It is the BFA showcase um, that is happening for our um, BFA artists, BFA designers, and also our um, performers have uh, their showcases as well. And it kind of happens all around the same time. And we get to see the seniors kind of showcase what they've learned for those four years and we invite industry professionals um, to come and see their work as well. Um, this year, of course, it's digital, but we typically do that in person. Um, and I just love getting to see all of those different events and amazing art and all of those opportunities that the students have um, because of that. And uh, College of, the, of Creative Studies. Yeah, believe it or not, visual artists, we want to show off our work. So um, honestly, my favorite tradition on our campus is our student show in the spring as well. Um, ours is a little bit different than other schools where all four years, um, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors are showing their work. Um, it's a really great opportunity. It takes up multiple floors in that 10, 10 story building that I showed you. Um, and then the very, it's up for a, about a month normally. Um, again, we're a uh, bit or um, uh, digital like most every place else, but normally it's up for about a month. And the very first night of the opening is a big kind of black tie event, um, you know, food, they have uh, musicians. It's a really amazing opportunity for the students. There's public, the public is invited um, and it's a real, real celebration of the end of their school year. And High Point University. I really love our welcome week. I think when students move in on campus, there's a buzz and excitement on campus. Um, I, as someone who graduated from High Point, was really intimidated uh, moving into college. And at High Point, 80% of our students come from out of state. So it 
it ended up that many people were in the same boat as me, really far away from home. And so I love the Welcome Week events where they have a lot of social opportunities. And then we also have convocation where students will celebrate joining the High Point University family and they'll be gifted a blanket. And we're instructed to give that blanket to someone who has really helped you grow over the last four years to get you to your spot in that freshman class. And so I like that they um, find ways to to make that week really meaningful and people will give the blanket to their grandmother, their parent, their favorite teacher from high school. Um, and so it's nice to just reflect and be grat grateful as you're starting your college years. Salve Regina. I also really like our welcome week and uh, we have something called a service plunge. So um, we're, I, I think, you know, compared to a lot of colleges in the Northeast, we're very integrated into the community around us. Um, so even though we're in a smaller city and we're kind of almost like in a suburb, um, but you can walk downtown. And so that plunge really lets our students, right when they're coming into Salve, get to know the greater community in the area um, and really see the folks that, that have the greatest need. Um, so I, that's probably my favorite part about the Welcome Week. And Northeastern University. I would say that my favorite tradition or what I think is the student's favorite tradition is called Husky Hunt. And this is an annual 24 hour scavenger hunt made of quizzes and challenges and excursions throughout the city of Boston and online. Um, so many students across our campus participate and it's a huge competition. So there's always a huge prize. And I just think it's something unique and, and quirky that our campus community really revolves around. Amazing. And we do have time uh, very quickly for one more um, question. Uh, give an interesting or fun fact about your school. So Albert, back to you at Cornish. Um, yeah, we are actually constructing three new creative spaces, a brand new um, sculpture lab is going to support ceramics, metalworking, woodworking, we're going to have new 3D printers, laser cutters in there, and then we're getting a brand new public facing gallery and a new uh, performing, performing arts space that is going to have a constellation sound system and will be the only college in the country with that system and what that means is that we can change the acoustics of the space to um, suit any type of performance, whether it's film, live performance, um, for theater, music, um, anything like that. So super excited about those. College of Creative Studies. So I've done a number of these six by sixes. This is the first time we've gotten to this question. <laughs> um, uh, oh, that's a tough one. Um, you know, I just think one of the most interesting facts about CCS is location, being in Detroit. It is an amazing city. Um, the more I learn about it, the more I fall in love with the city, um, you know, and that is an ongoing process. I think it's a dynamic city. Um, I think a big city can be scary if you're not coming from a situation like that, but it really adds a whole different dimension to your experience, um, you know, and again, a city like Detroit offers so much to you. I think that's something really interesting and, and kind of unique about, about our school. High Point University. So something unique and interesting to this year is our students are being gifted a Glo Go Global grant with everything that has happened in the last couple of years and our big focus on experiential learning. We wanted to give students an opportunity to really jump into that experiential learning piece and experience the world. So our students are being given, um, it's $4,500 to go abroad and either do a service trip or um, put that towards a semester abroad learning opportunity to really um, travel and see the world next year. Salve Regina University. Well, Salve Regina is located in the Ocean State, and so we really take advantage of being in that area. Um, despite having four seasons, you know, so you'll have snow in the winter and, and humidity in the summer, um, you'll see our students surfing. Um, and we actually have a really thriving surf culture in town, and we've been ranked as a top 10 surf colleges by a bunch of magazines, and we're probably in the, the coldest climate for that. So it's kind of a fun fact about us. And Northeastern University. 
Fun fact that I'll share is that we have recently invested in our research spaces and completed one of our newest buildings, which is called the Interdisciplinary Science and Engineering Complex. We call it ISEC for short. And the fun fact is that this space can only be used for collaborative research teams. So in order to use this lab space, you actually have to be on an interdisciplinary research team, meaning from multiple different departments or different colleges. So really focusing on the collaborative aspect of research. Well, incredible information. Thank you so much to our wonderful presenters. Um, for those of you who, who aren't aware, this is a very busy week for all of our presenters with May 1 decision deadline coming up. So thank you so much and, and best of luck to you all. And thanks for tuning in. Uh, when you close this window, there will be a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, again, this is just one of many sessions. So definitely sign up for more at the same place you, uh, you registered for this one at strivescan.com. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session recording as well as others at strivescan.com backslash Um, Thank you so much to everyone and have a great rest of your evening.